Well, I was uh, assembling the rear axles and uh, pressed in the bearing races into the discs and then uh, I uh, the rotors and um, anyway turned out the, the inner bearings fit fine on this shoulder here but the outers on both of these I needed to take some 600 grit and then some 1500 grit um, and bring these down a couple thousandths of an inch each before I could get the bearings to um, to slip on uh, perfectly so anyway it's all they're all good now they're they're ready to roll I haven't mounted the rear discs just because I'm waiting for some uh, new mounting hardware I decided to change my mind about a few things and so I'll get that hardware this week and then I can permanently install the rears so these uh, Borgs and steering U joints did not work um, you can see here I was opening them up to try to clearance them um, they're good for 35 degrees of, of movement stock but uh, I opened them up to about 40 and they still weren't enough so all the VW Vortex chat about that is bust and uh, the reason if you look in here with the stock ones the stock ones are um, much larger open joints and uh, they just you know there's more movement and the more ease of movement with that design so can't seem to get any decent mark ones and it turns out that the mark threes at the um, ZF uh, steering box uh, uh, steering rack and have the same 11 16 uh, 40 spline count and so I've ordered a couple of those off eBay from some uh, late uh, 1990s uh, Mark III's and I'm gonna see if I can fabricate take the two ends and make one um, one new um, U-joint assembly out of it so anyway um, got the front end all uh, done um, Steering's nice and smooth now. It's uh, I had to actually back off the the, the rack. I this uh, the rack was uh, it moves smoothly now. End to end, there's the wheel spinning as I pull this back and forth. So I had to back off on the tension on the uh, on the pinion pressure. I had it up a little bit tight, and it was binding towards the ends of the movement. Um, these awesome. Um, CV joints uh, assemblies that Josh got me uh, fit nicely and here's the 10.1 um, inch discs I got them slotted and drilled just so they look a little bit pretty and for perform well and then the Willwood four piston uh, caliper so that's all in it's not all torqued down because again I'm going to some 12.9 uh, uh, hardware um, so those discs there have all been test mounted here, but I've just taken it all back off again. And then um, it's going to get a little fuzzy because it's dark underneath the car here, but um, I've been working on the fuel lines. Yeah. And uh, they run under the car on that side from the back, and then they get to uh, the front. I've made a couple of stainless steel brackets that bolt into the end of the uh, A-arm assembly and then go up into the car and then there's a couple more joints and I've also got the exhaust system in and out a few hundred times because I'm working on uh, welding in the uh, that uh, front, uh, that little tiny resonator at the front where the catalytic converter would go. I want to be able to swap the cat in and out as well as uh, that resonator in and out depending on whether I'm racing or street use and that kind of stuff and the, these flanges, those um, three bolt flanges, I'll, I'll make uh, flanges on each end and it all fits, just barely, but it fits. I've um, been working more in here for the tapes just to protect everything but basically I've decided here what I'm going to do is I've um, got some um, epoxy, high strength epoxy mold material and what's called woods metal, the uh, low melting point metal. I will fill these tubes with the low melting point metal that me melts at 160 Fahrenheit. That'll act as my mandrel support. And then I will, once I've created the, 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 the mold of this curve, then I'm going to build a little clamp and I'm going to slowly squeeze those runners so that they're, they're flush here. They bend uh, another three quarters of an inch down or, or a little bit more. 
So there in the back you can see the lines run up and I've got a stainless bracket there and then another stainless bracket there and then they come around. I'm still missing some components, some end, end uh, hose ends, but uh, basically they, they, the steel lines come up. There's a Y here which is going to ultimately, when I get the last piece, feed the two rails for those two sets of injectors. And then that then goes to the uh, uh, regulator. Uh, that's the return line that's coming back around there. So anyway, that's good. And then I'm uh, building a bracket to support the bottom of the um, uh, the bottom of the header. So the way this works, uh, there's this new bracket I've just uh, tagged on, and um, basically. Uh, you've obviously got the support here and then at the engine there's going to be a bracket that comes off the base of the block and just with a piece of three quarter inch square tubing, stainless square tubing will, with a triangulated piece will, will, will hold the bottom of the header so that there's no stress over time on the header supporting the whole exhaust system. And I may, we'll see, but I may decide to um, put another, like right here, um, just drill a hole here and mount another uh, support for the exhaust system right, right at that point there before it loops up and around uh, the um, fuel tank and uh, just gives it one more degree of support. So there'll be flex pipe, oops we've lost focus, hello! Um, so there's a flex pipe, uh, I definitely don't have focus, there it is. There's a flex pipe there which takes some of the stress off the bracket that I'm fabricating and then hopefully one more hanger at the back there and that should should make everything perfect so there we go lots going on lots of fiddling things but uh, it's uh, been working out well so I'm uh, not complaining all right bye